Previously in our lectures, we covered uh, observable and controllable canonical forms. Okay, now uh, in this lecture, I will cover two uh, related canonical forms, which is uh, one is called diagonal and uh, the other one is called Jordan canonical form. Okay, so technically, diagonal canonical form is a, for a specific case. We cannot apply for any arbitrary uh, discrete time dynamical system. Okay, so in diagonal canonical form, we first assume that, okay, uh, all of the poles of these dynamical systems are distinct and different. It can be complex, and in this case, the uh, current form will be in a uh, complex framework, so a complex is okay, but there is no uh, repeated truth. So under this assumption, we can technically make a partial fraction expansion for a given transfer function and write it in this form. Okay, so y of c is equal to b0, b0 is constant. So c1, z minus p1, c2 divided by z minus p2, and c2 divided by z minus p3, and p1, p2, p3 are all of the uh, poles of the system. Actually, if uh, you can do it uh, for a dynamic system, a uh, realization in state space and block diagram uh, form is much, much easier than control and observable kinetic forms. Okay, so uh, as you can see, what is this? This is a summation of four different expressions. So what we do is we have u of c, which is the input signal, we multiply with all of them. Okay, we process them and then we technically sum uh, to compute out. Okay, so if we uh, come up with a block diagram realization, it will be like this. Okay, we have u of k. This is the input. Okay, so we multiply with b0. Okay, and this is technically u of c times b0. That's good. Okay, that's nice. So here what we do is we multiply with, I will do something else, 1 minus uh, z to the power minus uh, p1. Okay, that's good. Multiply with C1. Okay, that's great. Okay, I have another signal. So here I multiply with 1 over Z minus P2 divided by C2. And it is output. And similarly, I do the same thing for the remaining one. Z minus P3, which is multiplied with C3. And we have other signals. So output y of e is simply the summation of these four signals. So what we do is simply, okay, so let's do it like this. This is plus, this is plus. Okay, this is plus, this is plus. Okay, this is plus, this is plus. These are all summation, and this is y of k. Okay, let's look at the result. Okay, so this is the uh, a different block diagram realization for a specific uh, kind of discrete time systems where we have distinct poles and we can technically decompose it into uh, in this form. As you can see, uh, as well as your poles are distinct, we can do this for any n-dimensional system. Instead of one, two, three, there will be n many blocks. Okay. So what we do is, in order to come up with a discrete time dynamical systems, we label the uh, states as the output of each first order transfer function or first order filter. Let's say, okay, x1, x2, and x3. Okay, then we will, uh, find the uh, system evolution uh, equation. After that, we will try to come up with an output equation, which will finalize the diagonal current form for this third order system, which is super easy to generalize and order systems. Okay, so let's uh, look at the first one. Okay, x1 of z is equal to 1 over z minus p1 times u of z. Okay, that's good. So, which means that z times x1 of z is equal to p1 times x1 of z plus u of z. If we find a difference equation, x1 k plus 1 is equal to p1 x1 k plus u of k. As you can see, the most critical part in diagonal form is each state only depends on itself. For that reason, it is the like simplest form and easier to understand, easier to manipulate, and do some computations. Okay, because this is a really first order independent difference equation. X1 depends on input and, of course, itself. So, what we do is we have three equations, and uh, the system matrix is super easy, which is equal to E1, 0, 0. 0, p2, because x2 will only depend on itself. 0, 0, p3. This is x of k. And at the input matrix, we have 1, 
one, one, because all of them UK, UK. This is U of K. And Y of K is what? C1, X1. C2, X2. C2, X3. Plus B0. So it is equal to C1, C2, C3. This X of K. Plus B0, U of K. As you can see, we obtain the same uh, D matrix because it's always equal to B0. So let's look at the result. Okay, so for n dimensional system, it will be the case. So, what's the idea? So, B matrix is a simple one matrix, okay, all of them are uh, technically vectors. Output matrix is composed of the uh, partial fraction expansion coefficients. Okay, D matrix is B0, and A matrix is a simple diagonal matrix where all of the elements are equal to the poles of the system. And as you remember from your linear algebra class, they are also equal to the eigenvalues of the system which is obvious because uh, from our state space uh, knowledge in continuous systems, we know that eigenvalues and poles are equal to each other for control and observable systems, of course, and it is the same here. Poles and eigenvalues are same, and since they are the same, so in our state space form, in order to the, the describe the stability of dynamical system, we look at the poles, which is, is super easy if you have a diagonal kind of representation. Okay, so what's the problem here? Obviously, if you repeat it true fall, it will break down. Okay, so uh, then now let's try to analyze what if we have a repeated pole. Okay, good. So let's assume that we have a transfer function, and let's uh, ignore this. Okay, and let's assume that this is an end order transfer function. Okay, and uh, in end order transfer function, we have a, a repeated root. Okay, so and let's assume that we have a, a triple root such that we have z minus p, z minus p square, and z minus p square. So p has a cardinal of three in a transfer function expression. Okay, and we have uh, other uh, different uh, non-repeated roots, or it can be a multiple different kind of repeated roots. But let's assume that we have a third order or n-order transfer function, and we have a block diagram structure like this. Okay, good. So we have b zero. C1, C2, C3, where Z minus P3, Z minus P to the square, Z minus P, and we have other remaining stuff. And let's try to realize this part. Okay, so we will uh, again uh, come up with the block diagonalization and it should be minimal. So we know that it's a third order system. Okay, so if I separate these blocks like separately, like uh, Z minus P is one block, Z minus P square is one block, Z minus P square uh, uh, cube is one block. I will have like six delay elements, it will be six door, which won't be minimal. So what I will do is I will do a trick. Okay, so I will do the same thing. Okay, so let's look at this. This is U of K, that's good. I have B0. Okay, B0 is the direct connection between the input and output, which is the easiest one. Okay, here I have this. That's good. So one over Z minus P, okay. So what I will do is I will multiply output of this block with another one minus C minus P block. Okay, so I will do the same thing. One over Z minus P. Okay, that's good. So let's look at this. So C3 is multiplied with one, one minus a one over Z minus P block. So what I do is Okay, so if I multiply with this C3, I obtain this. I already obtained that, okay? So C2 is multiplied with one over Z minus P square. So U of K, one over Z minus P, and one over Z minus P. So what I will do, I will multiply this with C2. Okay, that's great. And similarly, C1, okay, is multiplied one over Z minus P cube, which will be here. And what I will do is C1, and it will be the output. So I obtain all of the expressions. Okay, so I need to simply sum them to find the result. Okay, so this is plus, this is plus, this is plus, this is plus, and here I have the same thing. This is plus, this is plus, and this is the output. Okay, so this is the realization of the Jordan block. Okay, if you have other blocks, Okay, it can be diagonal or Jordan. They will also come into equation in separate forms. Okay, so here we see that if you have repeated pole, 
Okay, you cannot isolate repeated poles from each other for a minimum realization, but you can uh, isolate other poles, such as like uh, if your P is different, it can be another Jordan block or another diagonal block. Okay, so let's try to realize on this structure, okay, by labeling the states. So why I label my states as x1, x2, and x3? Okay, that's good. Let's try to do that, which shouldn't be that much hard. Okay, so x1 of z is equal to 1 over z minus p x2 of z. That's great. So if I find a uh, difference equation, I can clearly see that x1 k plus 1 is equal to p times x1 of k. So this part is very similar to the original diagonal kinetic form, but we have plus x2 of k. So instead of u, I have x2 of k. So I can do the same thing for x2 of k, and I will see that x2 of k plus 1 will be equal to p, same p of course, x2 of k plus x3 of k. That's great. Okay, but x3 is different because in the x3 I have uh, my input u of k. So in this case, it will be different x3 of k plus 1 is equal to p times, okay, x3 of k plus u of k. That's great. So I computed all of my system equations. Let's compute uh, the form. Okay, x of k is equal to, let's say, okay, 1 depends on itself with p, okay, and here I have 1 and 0. That's great. Let's get the x2. 0, p, and 1, okay, 0, 0, Ooh, p, that's great, this is x of k, and it is equal to, not equal to, plus 0, 0, 1, u of k. If you look at the output equation, let's also draw the output equation here, as you can see what I do is x1, c1, x2, c2, x3, c3, and of course we have b0, so it will be something like this, y of k, okay, y, oops, what happened, y of k is equal to c1, c2, c3, x, k, plus what I have, of course, b0, u times k. Okay, so uh, if uh, we have a third order sub function, if all of the poles are repeated, we will have a structure like this. So the take-home message is here. Uh, here, okay. So at the lower triangle, we have zeros. Okay. At the diagonal, we have poles, and these are equal to each other. And as you can see, the eigenvalues of this matrix is equal to p. Like we have three p's. Okay, p one is p. Lambda one is p. Lambda two is p. Lambda three is p. Which is obvious because we know that all of the poles are equal to p, we have a repeat pole. And the upper triangle, instead of zeros, we have a, like one here, okay? So, and if we uh, extend to the n dimensions, then one will increase, and we will have a bunch of zeros here, and in uh, for a third case, it will be on the one zero. Okay, so let's look at the big picture. Okay, so in Jordan canonical form, we can have Jordan blocks or diagonal blocks. Okay, so diagonal blocks, where we have only non-repeated poles, okay, which will be a simple diagonal form. And once we have a diagonal kind of form, for example, in this case, uh, it is a, like, I don't know, uh, M-dimensional system, and we have a block, Jordan block, which has N repeated roots, and it will be the case. Okay, in a Jordan block, you have a matrix, or like matrix block in A, which is composed of, as you can see, a triangular matrix of zeros, okay, a diagonals are composed of the P's, and these diagonals are also aligned with the diagonals of the A matrix, which is critical. And a uh, upper triangle, we have like one like uh, line, which is parallel to the P's. It's like the line parallel to the uh, diagonal line, and we have other bunch of zeros. And the B matrix associated with this Jordan block B uh, array is very simple. It looks like in the control account form, we have 0, 0, 0, and 1. Okay, so for example, if you put a 1 here, 
it won't be in Jordan canonical form. It can be a valid realization, okay, for a dynamical system, but it won't be in Jordan canonical form. So in the Jordan canonical form, you can usually convert everything in this form. Okay, and a general Jordan canonical form is uh, valid for all dynamical systems. Okay, so diagonal canonical form is a specific case when you have only repeated, non-repeated rules in the transfer function, but once you have repeated rules, what you should have is you should have a Jordan canonical form, which has some diagonal forms and Jordan forms, and this is called a Jordan form.